is making screw threads or chasing threads. Um, and as Rich knows, uh, in medicine, when we're residents, it's the see one, do one, teach one approach. See one spinal tap, do one spinal tap, teach one spinal tap. This is kind of like making screw threads for me. I've seen a few of them. <laughs> I've gone over some websites and um, I've done some and screwed up, so to speak, many times. Uh, but I think I've got something worked out. For references, I've got these, I made 20 copies of the section in Fred Holder's book on chasing threads. So, uh, Chris, can you pass them out or something? Like <coughs> All right. And his book covers other thread making things too. But the, um, as far as references go, Wyoming Woodturner, Sam Angelo, is uh, an Italian who lives in Wyoming. I don't know how the Italians come out there. Yeah. Sam Angelo? <laughs> yeah. But he's got great, at Wyoming Woodturner, he's got great videos. He must be making some money off the advertisements and stuff. But he's got threading boxes, he's got making the grain line up, um, a whole variety of them. There's two other videos, Alan Batty, if I said that right, did I say it right, Batty or Batty? Batty uh, has one by uh, Crafts um, Supply. If you go to YouTube, he has two of them on threading. Um, and uh, let's see if there's someone else. You can find a few others on thread. Captain Eddie, whatever his name is, Kelson, Kelson. Huh? Castle. Castle, yeah, he has, he has one too. Um, and uh, I think they're all good resources. I've looked at a lot of them, and this one is helpful. The only thing they don't show you, and they all allude to it, is how do you get the thread started? That's the hardest bugger to do. So there are ways to try to practice. Now, the woods are African blackwood, ebony, cocobola, Boxwood, um, I've seen one for a pony, my pony, M-A-P-O-N-E, as recommended woods, dense, hard wood. But as, as Heath had said, he's got local woods that he'd like to put some screw threads in. And can it be done? And, and I, over the table, um, I had the stabilized elder boxwood, box elder uh, table line. But I've used Sam Angelo, he says, mix some uh, Jap Japan dryer with boiled linseed oil and use that as a hardener. Brush it on. His, his measurements are about two inches of uh, boiled linseed oil and a cap full of, um, of uh, Japan dryer. His two, <laughs> his two inches are in a tomato can. So I mean, don't ask me what the, what the, what the measurements might be. But, Min Wax makes a hardener. Um, let's see, it's a JT supplier, JC Hardwood makes a hardener. Those things you can brush on that are epoxy like. And I haven't, I tried super glue, it wasn't great. Um, I haven't tried epoxy, and that may work <coughs> well if you're trying to get, put uh, threads into soft wood. But this is, this just proved to me that actually you can do it with this stabilized pen blind. Um, so, there are other things you can practice on because all those woods are expensive. Here's a couple of practice pieces. A candle. Huh? Fits in here. No grain. <laughs> no hand. So we're nervous she just had national TV. Oh, national TV. <laughs> Why? <laughs> anyway, candle. Um, rather forgiving, soft. PVC pipe. This one I did the outer thread, but you can take a piece of PVC and do the inner thread that I bring you from. Yeah. So here's a female thread cut into a piece of PVC. You can do a female thread and a male thread. 
This is all practice pieces. It doesn't cost you much money. As a matter of fact, dollar store, a dollar for each candle. Walmart, 93 cents. So I got two at dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got those, if we're gonna do hands-on, I've got enough to sort of practice with. Now, tools. Peter sold me these. These are 24, 24 uh, threads per inch TPI. Huh? He sold it to me for 35 bucks. Then Sorby sells their sets for 70. Um, that's the 24. And then Sorby sells. Everything else. Now there are other Hartfield tool sets in. This is uh, 10 um, TPI. These are 16 and these are 20. Now, you would say to yourself, if someone just said, gee, it must be easy to cut the 10s. Wrong. It's impossible. <laughs> I have cut two 10s. Here they are. Candle and a PVC pipe. Limited application for these things, you know? So <laughs> uh, I cannot get 10 in wood. It's easier to cut the fine threads than it is to cut the coarse threads. How do you explain that? <laughs> you know, the coarse, the coarse threads seem to be harder to fit into a groove. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate it. The um, I get the What you've got to do is this is a ten. And I prefer, if you look at that holder article, he likes to hold them like this. I don't. I like them straight on for the male threads, straight on for the female threads. What you have to do in a bare blank is get the teeth started into a rhythm. And the rhythm, once you get the rhythm established, I mean, you could hold this thing. These are scrapers, right? You could hold this thing steady and make nice grooves. I've done that several times. They don't screw on anything. So you got to keep you got to keep moving this tool, and you move it at the speed of whatever you're comfortable with. You'll look, and people will say 300, 500. I frankly use like 80. I can't get this. Is this on the second belt or something? Maybe no. Go on the lower belt, Chris. So 80 is probably good enough. I'm going to take these threads off. Okay, so I'm not going to use the 10 to start with because I always use that. I'm going to go to, since uh, take one, one nice to buy it, or I'm going to go to 16. Now I'm going slow. I put a camper, a little chamfer on the male side of the thread. What you want to do, if you want this on center too, really because it's a scraper. Isn't it? That's good. So, this is the hardest thing, and the, the, the videos just don't show it. It's getting the thing started. Can you zoom that? Yeah, I'm not sure what can you zoom. Uh, I can't zoom both cameras at the This is a software thing. The problem is getting those first few threads started, and you're moving this thing in an oval type fashion, and you're trying to do it is with regard to the speed of the lathe. And it's 
And I'm coming around the corner, if you can see it. I'm not catching the very first two. And I'm going to start getting some threads. Now, if you watch, as I get threads, the tool will move like it was a bolt. A bolt. It moves down the structure. Follows its own path. Follow its own path. Once you get it into following its own path, which it's doing now, then if you want to, well, I don't generally turn it up, but you can go a little faster, and you can. So if you notice, it's following its own path, making its own cuts, right? And this is 16. You make sure you try to go back and line it up when you get in there. And so we've cut now in this wax candle. There you go for 16 TPI. Now, if you look at this, it's going this way. You have to realize that when you try to fit these buggers together. Now that I've got the groove set in there, I could go to 200, but look how fast I have to move the tool. I don't like that. So I'll take it down. So I'm moving the tool at the speed. You've got to coordinate that feeling of how fast to move the tool along with how fast you're moving the lathe. And I don't like it to move quick. I like it to cut down slow. Okay. Are you trying to get the tape out of that? I am, yeah, and you can do that. You can do that just by, with the scraper, pressing in a little bit at the end. Yeah. You can get the taper out, or you can leave it in. It just it makes it harder to fit the pieces together. It so, wouldn't act as a starting thread? Huh? It wouldn't act as a starting thread? You mean that little taper would be easier? To well, it's tapered from here to there. That's just a little too far, because then it gets tied up. I mean, ideally, you'd like to keep them parallel. But then you... Then you, you have to go over it to get the thread that you need. You can see how deep the thread is. It varies whether it's 10 or... Do you put a square on there to make sure it's smooth? No. You can. You just eyeball it? Yeah. You can. I mean, you'll feel it when you try to put it together. So there's 16. And let me see if I can run a 10 on the wax, which is the only one in the PVC. Theoretically, also, you should have... A gap at the end of the groove, like that, so that the last tooth doesn't run into the wall and kick back on you. So on the male thread, you want a gap in there. I'm going to try to do 10. And 10 you have to do faster. I'll turn the zoom faster. And it's working on this thing. Oh yeah, you want to go over it over and because you, you don't want to jam it in there and break the tops of those threads down. You want the thread tops to be a little flat. But you can do that later if you have to. Now I'm running the 10 in fairly well. And just so I don't touch anything, I'm going to take a... Hang in there. A little better? Mm -hmm. All right, so now the 10 is going very well. You can see, I mean, I'm just eyeballing it. You can see the depth of the thread and looking at it and the depth that you're looking at here. So you get an idea when you've got enough in there. And if you look at holding, it suggests that you flatten the tops of the threads a little bit. Don't keep them real tight or pointy. So that's wax. And that's the male thread. Let's move to that candle fresh. Let's move to Male threads on the boxwood. Similar kind of 
procedure. I'm going to use the 16 again. I'll take a put a little chamfer on the front edge of that. And this one I'm going to make a little groove to allow that first tooth to run into that so that it doesn't get jammed, the head of it doesn't get jammed into the um, into the shoulder and then pick out the other thing. The other thing is keeping this thing sharp. Where's my I have a little leather pouch with a sharpener. Let me see. Anybody see it? 600 grit. Um, the wax on it now, but when you sharpen it, you want to sharpen the top surface of it. So basically, and keep it sharp because that's doing the cutting. Now I'm going to cut this down to whatever I need to go for 80. I don't know, 100. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up the little chamfer first. See if we can pick that up. Slowly, sort of rotate, taking that oval root. I'm picking up a thread or two at the very top of the chamfer. I'm going to try to turn the corner now. And you're starting in the middle of the cutting tool, not before the Correct. corner. Correct. That's right. I'm off that first, that first tooth. And I'm taking it easy. I'm trying to get that thread to spiral down, start carrying my tool by itself. There she's beginning now. All right, now we can let the thing run itself. And you're trying to keep the tool square. Are you pushing a little bit there, or is it kind of self heating No, I'm pushing it a little bit. I'm taking it, I just want a, just enough to take off a hair's breadth of wood. I don't want to crack the... Yeah. So you can see what my speed is kind of matching the 100. But I can speed it up a little bit. And you're going to see it, oh, the tool has to move faster. You have to move faster because you'll strip out the thread. You know, and you can eyeball it and see if it looks square. I say I don't like to go that fast. Sharpen your tool again to keep the cutting as clean as you can. And we're about there. And I don't hear you can hear and feel when the threads start to crumble. Um, you need some kind of lubricant on that. The, um, oh my God. Got a screwdriver or something? Just like so you pry the top off. That's <coughs> wet. Here. Who's got it? You got it? Huh? Oh, I got it. I got it. So I'm using Liberon wax. You can use, I've used mineral oil. Um, coat those threads. I've used hardener on them if I wanted to. Now you're going to get wax on your thread. Like that. That's okay. Rag anybody go down? Oh, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. And just keep bringing it down. And 
and you'll be taking off little shavings as we go along, hopefully preserving the top. All right, so there's your mail thread cut into that little chamfer on the top. Let's try to do a female thread. Now, when you're matching, do you, do you prefer to do one first and make the other one? The one? recommended way is do the female first, and I'll show you. The Sorby has a tool for size that is smaller and smaller. Like yeah. Right, right. Well, <coughs> I might as show you the tool now. This is their, it's made to do the female. Oh, one second. Huh? Yeah. Made to do the female section first. It's not bad. I mean, this is like 40 bucks, 39 bucks. So it's made to do the female section if you were, had your threads cut. You have to set it to the, the threads per inch, right? Well, first you make the measurement here, and then it has a little doodad that says 20 per inch, 16 per inch. Can you put it right above? Yeah. And we're on 16, so that you want to set this. And supposedly this compensates so that if you had your female threads cut here, you would then turn around and try to fit that into the make the tenon on the male part to measure between these two. Then you cut your threads and it compensates. Doesn't all, I mean, you still got to do a lot of fiddling, just like trying to get that nice suction fit that Terry got on that. Um, you've got to fiddle. And then you also can fiddle so much that you miss it, and then you, you know, you hit yourself in the head. And, you know, Jesus, then you throw it all away because it's not a suction fit and it's not a threaded fit. It's nothing. Garbage. Okay. All right. So now we're going to try to do the female threads. Now, I say I'm doing this a little backwards, but these aren't going to fit anyway. What are you sharpening for? It's a. Uh, I use a thousand grit at home. This and six hundred. This is a six hundred Allen lacers, but any six hundred diamond, basically, and it's just a flat across the top, basically. So we need a little chamfer here too. And for this one, you need an internal groove. I'm not Okay, now, what do we do with this guy? And it's the same kind of procedure. My on center, probably a little high. And it's a gentle coming around the corner. As the male, yep, this way, except that I'm instead of rotating this way, I'm rotating this way, taking it off the and going slow. So we pick it up. Huh? 
Sorry, sorry? Do the business about. Oh, yeah. On the outside, on the outside, I'm coming down and lifting it off and going back. I'm coming down and lifting it off and coming back. On the female thread, I'm going down and lifting it away. So this direction for the female, whereas this direction for the male. So you go over that again. So I'm going to do the male thread. And I left this stuff like this so we can just, if you're going to try it, you can just flip back and forth. I'm going to do the male thread. So the male thread you're going to start here and go down and I'm lifting off this way. I'm going toward the headstock and lifting off. Toward the headstock and lifting off toward me. Toward the headstock and lifting off toward me. Something funny in that wood. So now it's following itself, right? And then I could I could see easily putting that first tooth in there if I want, because I can see it. If I was going too fast, I wouldn't have the control. So you really recommend like doing wood not a lot of grain production. You want it straight grain, this is end grain. So you want it straight grain, dense. And you know you could um, you could uh, uh, Dave McLean said what about hot horn beef? I guess that's a nice hard wood. Desert iron wood is that a is that a tough one? Apple, Apple I used yeah. Okay, so there again, Keith, I'm going down and off, down and off. Okay. So when I turn around and do the female thread, it's the other direction. I try to keep the rest in as tight as I can. It's the other direction. I'm going down and off, down and off, down and off. Toward the headstock and off. Toward the headstock. It's now picking itself up, so it could probably go a little faster. But. And how can you adjust the thread? Well, you can take a little, and I, I, there is another tool they sell, and a lot of people like to use it. You'll see it in the book. It's like a hook. So you hold the hook under your arm and you pull this thing. I don't like it because I like the finger pressure. I can feel it. I can feel what it's doing. I can feel when it's breaking it down. I can angle it a little bit in the back if I want to taper it. I can angle it in the front if it's too high. So there you are, cut female and male throat. 16. Harder to do with 10. Um, I'll try 10 since I'm getting better as time passes. When you do your fitted pieces, have you started exactly the same diameters inside and outside? No, they're a little different because you've got to allow for the size of the thread. Oh, okay, that's right. right. So now that I have those cut, I would go in here and say, ah, okay, now we want to and I want to know what I need for the male side. So that tool dictates your outside diameter for your male thread? Yes. You go for the female thread, then you say, I'm using a 16-point tool. I need a diameter that large. Between here and that shot. The other way you can do it is turn a little tenon. Turn a little tenon on... Uh, let me saw this. Turn a little tenon on a solid piece that just fits inside the threads. And then leave what you think is enough depth outside it to allow for the thread. Well, so it's trial and error, though. It's trial and error. It's just like making that, that's as I said, that, that suction fit lid. It's a little bit off, a little bit off, a little bit off until you get it and pop. Um, 
So it's the same thing. I said them, and I was using that, but you don't have to. You can use your calipers, use whatever you want. Set it to just a little thicker. If, you, if it comes out and it's too tight, you take your tool and you run it down again. Take a little bit off, a little bit at a time. Wax it down, a little bit at a time. So you can use the thread casing tool to slightly reduce the diameter of the pen and you need to adjust it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I actually, I leave it a little oversized. So say I wasn't using that, I just got that tool yesterday, but I knew it was available and I thought I'd take a look at it. But you can take your, um, I don't have them here, your calipers and measure that. Allow a little more, do your outside male thread and then start taking it down. Screw it in, it fits, great. Take it out, doesn't fit, take it down a little bit. You can take the female down. The other question might be how much thread do you really need, like I mentioned before? Do you really need a lot? Do you just need two or three? I probably got too much on there. It's gonna make the fit a little harder. Um, doesn't quite fit, what's a way to take it down? Easy, you get your, um, Straight scraper. Take the peaks off. Without taking all the threads off if you don't want to. Get your threading tool. Make them deeper. Keep doing them until they fit. If it looks a little too, if you're not perpendicular here, maybe you want to make it a little deeper in the back, you can do that. Or make it a little deeper in the front. And then you can do the same thing with the male thread, obviously. I like the, the, uh, the um, rest really close so that, that the um, scraper thread cutter doesn't dip down. And you can do the same thing with the mail thread. They're cut so I can go a little faster. But I can take a little off the front, a little off the back, just depends. And there's a little crack in that thing or something like that. All right, so that's, I think, the essence of it. I didn't, I, the only thing I will try is, I'll try to cut 10 in wood. See if I can show you the video. Now this one they say Instead of running at 100, maybe run it at 200 since it's going to go a little faster. See if we can. Um... This is, it doesn't move as well. You have to keep moving these bubbles. Seems the 10 seems to get stuck without me being able to advance it. And then it doesn't fit into the grooves as well. So that I, I wind up making grooves like that instead of moving down the thread. So right now I've got grooves without really having any thread to it. And that, and that happens to me with that bugger all the time. I say the um, boxwood is the recommended wood. Let's see if we can uh, get down there. Yeah, yeah. If you look, if you, if you came close here, you could see I'm making, I can't pick up the grooves as easily. I just cannot make this damn thing work anymore. What if you 
used, so I think it's a wider time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you think going even lighter, you think it'd be better? Yeah. Right. And I've tried to go slow, I've tried to go fast. Let's try Wayne's idea with a little lighter touch. Hmm? I think I, I think I've actually got that. You say? You talk to South Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think it's getting those grooves started. I think I've actually got it. Yeah. It's a little trickier. I think it's working. It's harder to get those line of grooves up and easier to turn them into grooves as opposed to threads. I mean, see, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've actually got that one threading. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think this is actually working. Yes, it is. I think if you can see it, the tool is moving. Down the thread. Oh, right. the huh? Yeah, there's something. a bad, there's some kind of chip spot or something. Right now. Oh yeah, there's some threads that are torn out. I just think it's it's harder to use. I mean, Anna is actually working some. Um, if I move it a little slower is what I usually like to do. But you can hear and feel when the threads are broken down. I think the piece is not very concentric either. It might not be, yeah. But it's still the 10. Okay, so that's thread uh, chasing. Um, you hear with the high ones, you can use stabilized wood. That works. You can try stabilizing your local woods. Um, experiment with the different woods. If they look dense and hard, then it may well be a very workable situation.